Well, here we are at the National Museum of Transportation. Obviously light rail here. So obviously there are a bunch of forms of transportation here. Not this particular sample, but that would be an interesting car to have driven. Most of what's here is trains. So if you have kids, they can test the whistle and the bell. Some nice samples in here. Now I had to cut the audio because as usual since with them playing music I could not um, include that in my video per YouTube rules. Some of these things like this Hyperloop they're interesting. I don't know that I would choose to ride in them. But you can see with the older um, forms of transportation, you know, horse driven carriages and so forth, the influences on our more modern forms of transportation, even on the Hyperloop. I would guess that those are modular and they just kind of stack them together. Just end to end. There's another one. No thanks. I, I don't think I'd want to ride in that. There's just an incredible amount of blue. This particular Chevrolet is a loaner that was a 57 Bel Air, maybe 56, but it is a loaner. And there are several loaner vehicles in the Museum of Transportation. Well, that might have been fun for, you know, one ride. Riding a little carriage, yeah, that's, that's very nice. I said one ride. If I still had my teeth, uh, I'd be thankful. The 8ED boxes and the thermostat are not part of the exhibit there on that wall. Just like with the wheeled forms of transportation, the winged forms of transportation you can also see the influence of the originals. This is a nice display. It has a lot of information and things. But if you're into something, if you're not into trains, most of this museum is not for you. So just a little forewarning there. Little model train exhibit, but only one of the trains is currently running. Uh, Thomas the Train or whatever the heck. This other one is just sitting there for whatever reason. If you push the button it does not go. At least it did not.
these display shelves are just full of all manner of things. If you look down on the bottom of this one, well, those ships and planes on the top are interesting, but in the bottom of this one, it has a bunch of cars that span the entire length of the case. That's quite a distance there. And you can get some various things. They have basically two gift shops here that sell things that you might be interested in. If you have kids, this is very kid friendly. So something for most people if you're interested in transportation. They have transportation things adults can see and, and do and for children as well. Now this is the winter. There is a train that would run normally here that adults and children could both ride on. And it says the last trains run for the day, but it shut down. It's too cold. Now this here is the museum section that has cars in it. This particular car, there's only one of them. So Jay Leno does not have this one. So this is the only one right here in the Museum of Transportation. It obviously has no door locks. It has like a five or six gallon tank. It was built by a clothing designer. This is not something that's going to go very far. It's not practical at all. You got a little horse-drawn carriage. It would be a better ride than some, I suppose. Actually, no, these are motorized. Just built off of horse-drawn carriages. I remember these types of vehicles being a lot more prevalent, but of course they predated me. Oh yeah, I'd like to have one of those. Either one of those two would be fun to drive. Not those. Not a fan of some of that suspension. All right, now here's the hall you've been waiting for. Got some interesting vehicles here. Couple electric vehicles. This one with the um, going doors has nine car batteries in it. Eight to power the vehicle and one for all the normal stuff that you would use a 12 volt battery for. Now these vehicles, some of them are on loan, but apparently it's a perpetual loan. They don't seem to ever come drive their vehicles. In fact, only one of these vehicles apparently ever gets driven. One of the vehicles in this museum. You may remember a similar solar car in the um, World Auto Museum, the uh, video that I did. Yeah, these vehicles a little bit predate me. Now, of course, that electric vehicle over there, that was in the 80s. 
So everyone's had a chance to see one of those, I guess. That way predates me. Now I go on about how great Peevely Milk is, but really not my favorite. Can you imagine riding around on a bicycle like that? No, thank you. I'd give that for it a try, but it's not as easy as you might think. Now, here's a Stanley Steamer. I'll tell you something interesting about these a little later. A little interesting story that kind of concerns these that I'm sure you're aware of if you're a car person. A little Fiero over here. Another one that's a loner, but apparently perpetually. Not in, in terrible condition, but not in great condition either. A lot of these cars, the brakes have long since ceased working. You can just push the cars around pretty much. I mean, not the patrons, the curator. All right, you'd think this would be like a Tucker 49, but it's not. It's a Studebaker, I believe. And you can kind of tell as you get back you know, into the yeah, 51 Studebaker. If you get back into the passenger compartment, you can kind of tell it's not a Tucker. Memory of the drive in theaters on Historic 66. And yeah, we'll refer to that a little later here. I just remember the drive ins. I know there's still a couple around, but they're pretty much gone. I don't remember them so much being in operation, but I remember driving by and seeing them. Now most of the vehicles in here, um, well they have 200 other vehicles in their warehouse. That they can, you know, they rotate vehicles through supposedly. The that closed designer vehicle, I can't remember the name of it, somebody other car that helped finish it off. We saw when we came in. Um it's pretty it's permanent there. It doesn't move. And that there's another one in here that's pretty much permanent that we'll get to. But in theory, the rest of these they could cycle out for one reason or another, just so that you know if you go every year, you might see different things, and which is which is really cool. Obviously, Chevrolet Star is cheap family transportation. You can see it there. These aren't really my style, I suppose. And probably not Elvis' style for this Cadillac. All right, and then we have here the Chrysler turbine engine. Now, Jay Leno was supposed to come here to look at this one, but of course he got burned by one of the steam cars like the one we just looked at earlier. This is one of three remaining running prototypes. There are 55 of them built. There are five others that are in various stages of missing parts elsewhere. This one originally was missing a lot of parts, but they managed to get the parts and it does run. This is the one that's taken out of the museum sometimes. And although it has fewer parts than a traditional combustion engine vehicle, it's a pain to maintain, takes a while to get going. I do remember Coral Court. It was it was still in operation. Um, it was a place that, like they say on here, you could um, you could essentially rent by the hour. 
you know, take you know, people notoriously would take their lady there. You could pull your car into the garage so nobody would see you there, and you could do your thing, whatever your thing was. Um, but yeah, you can read on here about it being um, eventually rented by the hour. But they say this was the notoriety. You know, it was it was the rent by the hour was the nail in the coffin on there. So kind of an interesting history but yes that's been gone for you know wherever it says some years ago now I think it was 97 something like that so but it was long historic 66 which is a tie-in from earlier you know there were there were a lot of different types of things on 66 and that was not originally what it was meant for it was a very luxurious um, motel you could just pull up with your car in the garage wouldn't have to worry about it, it was kind of like staying at home your car would be all in you know safe in the garage out there while you slept so the upstairs here is a little bit um I guess they have private parties and stuff up here normally. There's not really a whole lot up here. <laughs> DeLorean and the Ghostbuster Mobile. So if for some reason you're not going up, although there is an elevator, you're not missing a whole heck of a lot. that horn is no longer functional. The rubber bellows seem to have deteriorated. All right, now if you look over here a little bit, in the bottom of this cabinet, there's an instrument, oh sorry, not that cabinet, this one. There's an instrument cluster from a Fiero probably an earlier year than the one downstairs. I don't believe that those would match up. Mustang, the Corvette, and yeah, some nice cars there. You may have noticed downstairs they went through 10, no, 10, 2010, but not uh, 2020. Another view of this car, this one-of-a-kind car. Some of these cars, they have little videos to explain things that you can see in here. But, of course, I had to cut those from my own video. So you have to go there see those. Again, very kid-friendly. So this, there are some activities you can do throughout the museum if you're into that as well. But if you have people, younger people that aren't, then they can have something to enjoy. Now, some of you may remember a big van, a bus, and bringing books around. I vaguely remember that. I wasn't really in an area where it was a thing. Obviously, you know, everyone can drive to the library now, or they can just get their books on, read their books online, you know, have on their tablet, whatever. You don't have to go to a library. Come to think of it, not too long ago, we found one. It was, it was kind of a, on a loaner program, not exactly a library, but similar. You know, but say there were like 150, 200 books in there or something like that. It's not a whole lot. So these railroad cars, engines, various railroad related stuff make up the majority of the museum. We're done with the car part. That's all there was for this museum. 
And of course, trains were a major part of our history here in the U.S. These cars are in various um, states of um, disrepair. The museum is making an effort to restore or maintain a lot of the stuff, but not everything. There are ongoing efforts. These cabooses are really interesting. Anything you'd want to know, pretty much, is labeled, signed, explained, the who, the, the what, the why, the how, whatever you wanted to know. So you can read some of these signs if you want. And I, you know, I recommend you actually go look at these in person if you can. There are actually several cabooses here. Obviously, we don't use them anymore. There's no longer a need to have a caboose on a train. It's not a modern train. Sometimes, you know, if you're out and about, you may see an old train. They bring them out every now and then for a tour for one reason or another. They brought out one some years ago. I went, I did not get video, but it was just a massive engine. Okay, more cabooses. And they're set up a little differently from each other, you'll notice. I like that sign in the black stencil lettering up there at the top. Now it's amazing. These were more than a hundred years before our modern motor homes. And you know that a lot of that stuff I talked earlier in the video about the influence from the original designs or the older designs coming forward. A lot of that stuff is almost identical in motorhomes. Even you know the 80s and 90s motorhomes are almost identical. Now they've improved some stuff since then, but yeah, you know, obviously very effective. All this is a very colorful engine here. You may notice some street names here. And they are very specific with their street names. You can read all about them. They have a nice little guide and map and everything to tell you all about why they named things the way they did. But it is not happenstance. There were reasons for everything here. Even the cars that they chose now some of them, I don't know why there are so many Pullman cars, which you'll see later. They do not allow you on the majority of the cars here. And as they say, that's for your own safety and to protect the displays. Because these are at this point, these are displays. They're not going anywhere. Pretty big engine there. And there's that game that kids can play. <coughs> Excuse me. Now if you look, there are a lot of different types of engines here. We'll see some more engines, different types, later on. I did not climb on everything, but a lot of them that would normally be open are currently closed. Uh, 
videos you probably saw, they tell you there's there is the possibility of trains being in operation and moving around here. A lot of them have permanent wheel brakes on them just so that they don't rust to the track. So, you know, a lot of these I don't think are moving a whole lot, but yes, there is always that possibility. Look at the size of some of these. You see some of the cars we looked at earlier, walked by earlier. I forget what they call these little train sheds. There's a name for them. so varied and that's one of the reasons that they're here in the museum and you don't want to get all you know 20 of the same thing that would get old in a hurry and if you look at some of these to the right you can see that well you could see that yeah some of them and they're just falling apart I mean they're they're in a terrible state of repair yeah, right there you see just behind the wheels on the, to the right there yeah that's not in good condition at all and I don't know that they'll be able to fix all of these now sadly as time passes as interesting as trains are I'm sure people will lose interest and forget about a lot of this I'm pretty much nothing in here. I don't, I don't want you claiming on anything in here. And then past this is the the garage they're using for restorations. I was here maybe 20 years ago. That one orange one looks like from an old old truck. Or it looks like a school bus or something. But I believe most of these were here 20 years ago. Alright. A lot of, like I said, a variety of cars. And look at all those Pullmans. carts of and transportation of one type or another. And again another different type of engine. This whole row is kind of unique. Obviously, I wasn't climbing between the other trains, or was not a whole lot of room. I don't think they want you going in there anyway. Look at this engine. Isn't that incredible? So it's more of a modern type engine there. Nickel Rate Road, huh? Alrighty, and then there's this engine at the next to the ticket booth. Remember that blue green whatever building is. Alright, let's go look at some more trains.
Look at how massive these are. I mean, just, just massive. And that big tank up there is above my head. All right, now this one, it is exactly what it looks like. So snow can get pretty deep on the tracks. And this is a rotary snow remover. There you go. So it makes a hole big enough the train can get through, hopefully. Now that's for deep snow. Now if the snow, and sometimes these get stuck too. If the, if the snow is not that deep, then they can use a wedge car. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's go back and look at a, oh. Let's look at the wheel on this. This wheel has got to be five feet in diameter. So just to give you an idea of the size of that train. All right, let's go look at the wedge remover. Oh, we can go look at this train, this engine first. Now it's obviously a steam engine. So things are controlled with valves. You know, different valve, you know, each valve gets a different thing. There's the wood hopper. All right, there you go. You notice a lot of the valves are not labeled, but there, there are enough valves in there to control whatever needs to be controlled, I guess. I'm not sure I'd want to have to remember which valve did what. Just look at the size of that thing. All right, here is the wedge snow remover. Sorry, snow plow. All right. Now, I, I had hoped to go in the train of thought, but it is currently closed. I suspect it's closed because it's the winter season, but I could be mistaken on that. All right. Now I've already seen these engines down here, but my feet are at the top of those. I'm going to walk down several flights of stairs here. And now my feet are just slightly below those, or maybe a foot or so lower. All right. Yes, you can read about that one. Now this is for turning engines around. I don't know if you've ever seen those. But when the engine would get to the end of the track, they would need to turn it around so they could just kind of Put it on this and then run it down the side track to the end and move it over and re back up reconnect to the cars and off they would go i am freezing out here it is very 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 did i say very cold for me now in the grand scheme of things it has been colder but my hands are just about frostbitten. I'm so cold. So I guess this is supposed to be a clay model or something. I'm not really sure what what that is, and I'm not climbing out and breaking it to find out. They call this a towboat. But obviously it pushes. And you can climb on it, but it's mostly closed. I'm pretty sure most of this railing is for the safety of, you know, people like me that are climbing on it. 
Most of the ladders are closed off. You can't go in anywhere. But you can see some things in there. And again, this is set up fairly comfortably for, for the people who run it. Yeah, no, you cannot go in the pilot house. All right, I am cold. There's the plane. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And have a nice day.